points. He's currently in 10th place. If he wins a point there, that puts him on six points. I can assure you, Carl, as the day goes on, our brains will fry. We know this myself and Michael from commentating on Championship League snooker. Only seven players in those groups, and they can get so complex. So with 16 players towards the end of this session and certainly into this evening, calculators will be very useful. Now, Yukioi is on four points. He currently stands in 14th. And he's only got two games left. So we feel he needs to win both of these matches to get to six points. And then Lady Luck will take its place. But if he doesn't win both of these matches, I feel like his tournament is over. That is definitely true. Whereas, it looks as though Skylar Woodward's tournament is about to be reinvigorated. He started the day having played only 11 matches, so he had four today. And I reckon if he wins two of them, we'll see him tomorrow. Attention, please. Yeah, the more games Skylar wins today, of course, that's better for him moving forward. He can only get himself to nine points after the end of play tonight. That would mean moving forward, he's going to have to beat some of the guys at the top with more points. This will all take shape. You'll start to understand when he's done it. It's a very good win in the end for Skylar Woodward. It is, and... The likes of Albin Ocean and Joshua Filler, they had the opportunity to really streak clear of everyone. But they're now suffering the, the odd defeat here and there. Extended. Or in Ocean's case, a block of defeats. All of the action on table two is available on matchroom.live. And next up over there, it is Francisco Sanchez Ruiz against Miesko Fortunski. Been a week of pain for Albania's Eklund Kakti. He's just got to play just to try and gain a little bit of pride back today. He's only got the three matches left. Well, I was just going to say the nightmare continues as he flukes the set. He's just not at the races at all. I think he knows he's not qualified. and That's not easy to go out there and play when you feel like you can't advance. A victory here would be just a, a small silver lining, I suppose. And he has the first rack on the board. He could be a spoiler, of course, and ruin all his chances of moving forward. So this is the updated table now. Skylar Woodward has made a big move into the top half. He's got six points. And as I said before, he has three matches left. One thing I have to say, and I think it's really illuminating even with this format race to five alternate breaks the cream has risen to the top look at the players who are prospering filler Ausch and Shaw the three guys you'd write in on a European Moscone Cup team sheet without question then you've got David Alcady double world masters champion Francisco Sanchez Ruiz won the Derby City Classic nine ball already this year in two Euro Tour events last year. Shane Van Boning, one of the all-time greats of this game. 
Alexander Kazakis, who will defend his World Tour Masters title in Gibraltar in May. And then Skylar Woodward, another MVP at the Moscone Cup. Yeah, the top four players there all represented Team Europe. The Moscone Cup is a race to five. This is a race to five. A little bit of a coincidence. But our fifth player, well, he's holding the group up, Phil. He's in 16th position. Yes, we were talking about this last night. There's terminology in the UK that if you finish last in a group or in a league table, you get the wooden spoon. It's a, a notional thing. You don't actually get a, a wooden spoon. At least he could possibly avoid that if he won his last couple of matches. By the way, without being repetitious, I have to say, this wind speed here, it's Storm Eunice hitting the UK, and the, the wind speed in Milton Keynes is seemingly increasing by the moment. Our tournament director is Rob Spencer, and he doesn't have the best of luck when it comes to weather events. There was heavy rain in a... British coastal resort called Brighton and he was tournament director at a, a second division snooker event and the club where they were the roof collapsed so I hope that Rob's bad luck doesn't continue here well that's not the commentator's curse that you've just done on us Phil I am sat right next to the window as well so I might move over to your left in a moment Phil <laughs> Over on table two, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, current Derby City nine ball classic champion. He's getting his match underway against Poland's Fachunski. That's also an interesting matchup, more for Fachunski than Sanchez. Sanchez, he's had eight wins. Fachunski, well, he's on four wins, but he's only played 11 games. So he needs some wins. He can still do it, can Fachunski. Yes, as these matches progress, what is still quite a, a cloudy picture will become clearer. But it really is worth reiterating that every match counts because for the Phase 2 group, which starts tomorrow, which features 10 players, they all play each other over the weekend. There's not a total reset. Points gained in this phase will count so even the guys who are through they can't afford to take their foot off the pedal Second breath. here Eklan Kachi is restoring a certain degree of pride he leads Naoki Oi 2-0 Oi slipping into deeper and deeper trouble so let's just take a look over onto table two briefly it's quite clear that Sanchez Ruiz has got a chance to win the opener. Yeah, he's done well, Francisco. Started off bad in this event. But he's found his form and he's kept going. He's currently on eight points. So he wants to keep his matches going. He's only got two matches left. But if he could win them remaining two... He would find himself on 10 points, and that would be a real nice position to be in. His good buddy, best friend on the circuit, David al was also on eight points. He's also played 13 matches. They've been matching each other's success yesterday. They was both having the same score lines. They pretty much finished at the same time. They won the same score, so inspired by each other Francisco's last match after this one will be against Lucius Yap not been a great event for Yap he's currently in 13th place 
as Ruiz takes the opening rack there on table number two. You can watch that match on matchroom.live. I must say, Cole, we've had some great pool over the last four days, but this has been the day we've been looking forward to because everything definitive will happen today. Yeah, on a selfish note from where we are, Phil, we've, we've been waiting for this day. This is when the matches become a little more intriguing. The stories start to happen. The first couple of days, you're just watching the players get used to the setup and wrap the points up. But now, these matches mean something. The smiles on the players' faces are slowly drifting away. On Judgment Day, here at the Premier League pool, Lots of side, so he avoided the nine ball. Oh, look at that, though. Horrible queuing over the seven. We say it a lot, don't we, Phil? Just try and play that shot off three rails and leave the cue ball there. It'll take you a week. Extension, please. And it just changes the whole complexion of this shot now. If the cue ball doesn't stop there, well, it's easy. Now he's got to pot this. The five does pass the eight, so he can just focus on the pot. But it's so much harder. And this is the problem. You can't see the pocket in your eye line. You're striking down on the cue ball, and often you put a, a little bit of unwanted spin on the cue ball, and you miss the pot. In any sporting context, particularly this, where you play a lot of pool over five days or maybe seven or eight and things start to go badly for you it's so easy to fall victim to the worlds against me syndrome we sit in here and pontificate and say you know you've got to not dwell on things but it's so difficult not to yeah once you're out there the lights are on and the, the cameras. You lag off for break. There's a there's a little bit of a change in your mind. It's game day. It's time to perform, and that's what happens when you end up missing a few balls. You feel like you've never played the game before. Then a few rolls start going against you. Sometimes you feel like snapping your cue in half. But you've got to stay patient. We've seen that from Catcher. He gave up a few racks, didn't he, early on. He didn't look interested. Then he decided to stay in bed a little later. He's had a funny old week as Catcher. In fairness, I don't think he decided to stay in bed. <laughs> it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a conscious thing. Oh. Well, Phil, this this is unbelievable this is why these guys they, 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 they want this call shot rule I know obviously it has been a big day over the a big debate over the years but he's had two unbelievable flukes I mean he's queuing so bad and of course now he's having these flukes and even they are getting under his skin because he's thinking why am I getting the flukes now and it doesn't matter yeah and the UQ he needs to win these two matches just when it matters, there's obviously a case for, you know, obviously saying, well, he's not done enough early on in the event. That would be a fair point. But just when he needs to win, two racks he's lost here are unbelievable. Yes, two flukes for Eklund Kachi. Three racks won. Naoki Oi now on the brink of elimination from the tournament. Kachi leads 3-0.
You've heard of Freaky Friday. Well, this is Fluky Friday. Eklund Kachi, the beneficiary of a couple of really extraordinary slices of good fortune. He's 3-0 up on Naoki Oi, who badly needs to win this match to retain hope of being in the next phase. Mind you, of course, Kachi not alone in getting flukes in our first match on table one. Jason Shaw was also the beneficiary. Yeah, it does happen, and just to rub salt into Naoki Oi's wounds, look at the split here as well. <laughs> He's had two amazing flukes that will certainly be on the highlight reel for the the best flukes of the the tournament. You know he breaks up in the, he breaks off in the fourth, and just look at the split he's got here. This is unbelievable. Score update from table two is that Francisco Sanchez Ruiz leads Mieszka Fortunski two 0 So that's not good news for the pole. No, but for change, he's only played 11 matches. So he still has another three left if he does go on to lose that match, as where Oi has played 13. After this, he's only got one left, and they're both on four points. Jokes aside, though, I know Catchy's had a little bit of form in this match, but it is worrying because that's not like Catchy to be missing balls like that. I know he's probably not giving it 100%. He's going to be a bit disappointed in himself, the fact that he's not made the top 10. So he's not probably 100% bearing down, but it is a little bit worrying. Apart from the beautiful nature of the break from his perspective nothing lucky about that rack he won it very nicely and very swiftly he leads Naoki Oi 4-0 we've not had a recovery from 4-0 down in any match so Oi's prospects are bleak rather like the weather not so for Francisco Sanchez Ruiz who's got another opportunity here to go 3-0 up on Fatunski You know, we've not seen many donuts this week. That means when you beat an opponent and they're on the zero, the zero is basically the donut, so we call it a donut. We, we might see both tables put a donut on their opponent. You're partial to a few donuts, aren't you, Phil? Guilty is charged, Your Honour. Please take 167 of the offences into consideration. <laughs> Three nil. It is very efficient pool from Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. I can actually put a number on what Carl was saying. We've had 98 completed matches so far this week, and only four of them have resulted in five nil score lines. Will this be the fifth? <laughs> well, if you've ever seen a more one-sided pool match than this, please get in touch because I don't think it exists, Phil. This has been incredible. practice table before he went out Francisco Sanchez Ruiz was telling Naoki Oi all about Spanish and how to say hello in Spanish I think he might want to say something like I'm the unluckiest person in the world in Spanish after this <laughs> or maybe even a couple of swear words just to <laughs> relieve the frustration Listen, Naoki Oi's seen it all he'll just laugh this one off that's all you can do. 
Kachi is going to try and break these two balls out and draw right back down the table off the edge of one. <laughs> oh, he's even missed that. Oh, Kachi. Listen, 4 0, the comeback's still on. In these short races, you can make things happen. It's quite obvious. Kachi's not playing great pool, so. Oh, he's got to stay patient. That's easier said than done. Nice pot. Looks like he's got to play a safety shot here unless he's spotted some form of uh, exhibition shot. Just chip off the edge. Try and use that green six to help you. Extension, please. Will certainly make it difficult, but it is kind of difficult, that, because it looks like chipping off the edge might push the four onto the rail. Real nice shot there from Eklund. One of those shots, wasn't it, where he was almost frozen. It does take some time when he's over the shot. It stays very static. And I think on that one, he was even lengthier over it than normal. Yeah, you could be forgiven of thinking your TV screens have um, paused, couldn't you, at times when catches down on the shot. Oh, he can see the left side of this one, so he's going to try and put the six ball in the top right corner. Ah, oh, nice shot. Ah, two for one, oi. How'd you like them apples? He doesn't like that one. That's a bad apple. Yeah, we have seen these balls stay up all week, haven't we? Especially at pace. Ten seconds. Nice shot there, rail first. Yeah, a really classy effort and one that makes you realise that the fact he's just got one point about to make it two, that really is a low return for someone as abundantly talented as Eklund Kachi. Only the fifth whitewash of the...